Dirty politics is nothing new. Lyndon B. Johnson ran a political campaign advertisement that was so caustic, the Federal Communications Commission ordered it removed from television. A small girl was shown being blown up in a nuclear blast, as an announcer encouraged Americans to vote for LBJ or face a nuclear catastrophe. President Johnson on November 3rd. The stakes are too high for you to stay home. Many say there's a new wave of polarization in the country, driven by the media, with the Republicans and Democrats viciously attacking each other. Unlike the early days of broadcasting when broadcasters were required by the Fairness Doctrine to show both sides of controversial topics, Today's journalists can send out a steady stream of propaganda for their candidate. Some blame the media for setting the stage for the recent government shutdown. When I spoke this month at the Texas Association of Journalism Educators Fall Fiesta in San Antonio, none of the students could describe the Fairness Doctrine. I know of it, but I don't know what it is. Many of the journalism teachers at the conference were not familiar with the Fairness Doctrine, but several journalism professors present were well-versed in journalism history and the Fairness Doctrine. I think that students today just don't learn, they don't see it in practice. They see it as a uh, part of a chapter in a textbook or part of a mass comm law class. Essentially the idea was the Fairness Doctrine, if you were going to talk about one particular topic and have these particular views, you needed to make sure you you made space for other viewpoints as well, sometimes opposing. The media has focused much attention on the recent debate in Congress, with stations like MSNBC blasting the Republicans and talk radio host Rush Limbaugh blasting the Democrats. They have no obligation to provide diverse viewpoints because Ronald Reagan abolished the Fairness Doctrine. A radio or television station can no longer lose their license for broadcasting only one side of an issue. Yeah, would you believe I actually was talking about the Fairness Doctrine in one of my classes at West Texas A&M just this previous week? And what, do you feel like students really need to know anything about it? You know, I think, I think it is helpful because I think it provides a little bit of um, uh, context for, for some of the things, especially when you're talking about talk radio today on the AM dial. Talk radio would not exist the way it exists today if the Fairness Doctrine was still in effect. Former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, speaking at a Christian Science Monitor breakfast in 2008, stated she supports bringing back the Fairness Doctrine, something proposed by New York Democratic Representative Louise Slaughter. When I began my journalism career in 1973, the Fairness Doctrine was the law of the land, and it wasn't particularly burdensome. If you broadcast a story where one person accused another person of wrongdoing, you merely had to make sure you offered the person accused of wrongdoing the opportunity to respond to the accusation. Because I think the Fairness Doctrine, one of the things that people forget, it wasn't just about politics. You know, it was about you know fairness and a lot of different how we uh, covered news. A couple of weeks before speaking to the TAJE group, I requested comments about the Fairness Doctrine through social media and an email. One response was from a school administrator who said his school district was featured on a television station in recent weeks with a complaint against a teacher. The station aired the complaint against the teacher without a response to the complaint from the teacher or school district, which he felt was unfair. But most email and social media responses express the belief that government should not be involved in regulating the content of broadcast journalists. And honestly, if you were to ask me, should the Fairness Doctrine come back, I would probably say no. That would probably be my decision uh, uh, because I think to mandate that if you're going to talk about one topic and you must include a certain set of other types of points of view, uh, that can get in the way of free expression sometimes. As a journalism teacher, one of the difficult things I have trouble making students understand is the importance of presenting news stories in an unbiased way, sticking to the facts and leaving out opinion. Objectivity is part of high school journalism classes 
and other teachers at TAJE said they have difficulty teaching it. I, I think what we do, we try to teach it, but the fact is, is that kids today are going to put their opinion because that's just, you know, what they've learned from the time they're little bitty, that their opinion's important. And they put that in there. They also put it in like, hi, I'm so-and-so here today to report the news from such-and-such such because everybody thinks they're a TV reporter. Nobody anymore is a print reporter. They put that in their story no matter what they're doing. I, I think all journalism teachers, we try to tell our kids we don't care what you think, um, but again, it's, it's a hard concept to push across because, you know, the typical high school student has changed over the years. We don't have... Um, the hard-hitting news anymore because of the internet and because of the blogging and everyone's a journalist and the citizen journalism that's kind of evolving and stuff that it's really hard to take that personal side out of it. Some recent polls show that journalists are no longer respected. That's quite a change from the days when I graduated from college with a degree in journalism when Walter Cronkite was the most trusted man in America and I think a lot of it has to do with how fast we get the news out today that a lot of times journalists aren't checking their sources before they get them out there and, and they've been caught and it's, it's become a problem. These when the Fairness Doctrine was abandoned, Federal Communications Commission regulation of TV and radio licensing was also loosened. So many broadcasters have gotten rid of news or public affairs programs altogether. Some feel that loosening the restrictions on media have had a harmful effect on society. One comment by Robert F. Kennedy Jr. states, Broadcasters no longer have an obligation to serve the public interest. Their only obligation is to serve their shareholders. They serve that obligation not by informing us, telling us the things we need to understand to make rational decisions in a democracy, but rather by entertaining us. One of the most relevant responses to my email request for comments was from a retired newspaper editor. He said, everyone in the world who owns a computer is now either a reporter are potential reporter. The chance of one side of a political debate being denied so-called equal access to the news media has been greatly diminished. It seems doubtful that another government bureaucracy is needed to try to make radio and TV stations give equal time to all viewpoints.